Hello everyone, Genesis Writer here with my sixth gameplay review submitted by Box. This series is where I take your gameplay that you've submitted to me and I give you tips and tricks on how you can perform better in online matchmaking. Now, this gameplay was submitted by Box, otherwise known as iBox, on YouTube. Um, he is playing on the map Black Sight, which is made on the very dark Forge palette of Erosion in Halo 4. You don't get to often get to see um, these sort of maps because they are so dark. And I would like to point out a few things about the map before beginning the commentary. We have the overshield spawning top center. We have the rail guns um, right there and over here on the opposite side. And we have the lifts um, that, at the bottom of the tower that take you to the top of the tower. Now, I'll be going over this gameplay um, rather slowly at the beginning. The gameplay will pick up later on. Um, it is only a seven and a half minute gameplay and it is Rumble Pro. So you are not able to choose your Infinity Slayer settings. Now. Um, I would like to state that Box is currently a 46 in Rumble Pit. He is a very solid player overall, and this gameplay is exactly what I'm looking for in terms of reviews or gameplays to review. This is a phenomenal example, definitely in the top two of um, gameplays I wanted to review um, out of every single gameplay that's been submitted to me so far. So keep that in mind for your submissions, and I'll tell you how to submit your gameplays at the end of this video. So off the spawn here, um, box right here I'm going to slow it down so you can see this player who was clearly across from you and it was basically not playing or not moving now what I want to point out for to you is that the railgun is a really good weapon okay but I understand that many players just like the grenade launcher in Halo Reach was not a favorable weapon many players do not favor the railgun in Halo 4 because they do not ha know, know how to use it correctly and this can be remedied with some octagon games where you have infinite ammo and unlimited railgun. And I would highly recommend doing that because you avoid the railgun throughout the entire game. And I understand, trust me, I understand more than you may be aware why you wouldn't, would not go after the railgun. But it is crucial that you pick up the power weapons. This is what separates yourself, a 46 CSR player, from a CSR 50 player. And I'll be saying that several times throughout the gameplay. Um, and also the overshield is another very high priority. But you spawn literally in front of the railgun. You can easily pick it up, and you have this player sitting in front of you. Now, um, what I'm going to do here is step forward a little bit. If you had gotten this kill right here, your play may have been um, advisable. You may have been able to get away with this. But the problem with what you're currently doing is that if you know that this player is had spawned behind you, you would know that he also is not moving. This is another spawn on the map. And I, this is something I'm sort of opening your eyes to, but um, you end up not getting this kill um, at all, getting the assist, and then you stick here. And I want to point out something. The safest place to hide from grenades is right here, okay? Not standing out here away from the wall. You end up, your shields almost regenerate before the enemy player hurls a grenade, as he obviously will, at you around the corner and your shield's about to regenerate, and then boom, they don't. And unfortunately, now the player who's who spawned behind you decides to start playing, immediately sees you on his radar, and you're going to get cleaned up very, very quickly here. And not even getting the railgun, not even getting the, that player across the map who wasn't even playing. Now off the respawn here, you go after this player, and I want to point out your grenade throw. Okay, You have very solid shots here. But let's go over this grenade throw real fast. So what you do is you throw the grenade right here. Okay, you throw the grenade basically right here. And what this is going to do is it's going to bounce completely past him and do basically nothing. Right? What you want to do, and I understand you may have thought he was going to hide around the corner behind the rock, but even if you've known that, that's not the correct way to throw in the grenade. You would have thrown it at the wall, so it have then bounced behind the rock. But you need to throw the grenade much earlier at the floor, specifically just in front of this line, so that it'll bounce into his face, basically. Um, the way you threw the grenade, it's just going to bounce completely past him. Grenades have uh, are much more quicker moving, and after you've bounced them off a surface, they explode much earlier. You see how this exploded just in midair for some random reason? That's because you hit it first along the ground with a bounce. If you had bounced it earlier along the ground, it would have exploded earlier in his face, and you probably would have gotten this kill. As you do, you do have pretty solid shots. Now, right here, it is puzzling to me why you don't jump up on here. You want to get the high ground very fast, um, and uh, you do end up out bearing this player very well, very solid shots, but you don't go after the railgun, which is also puzzling. I would have grabbed the railgun, 
um, gotten up onto this rock and pushed over here and then started rotating around the map. As it is, you go towards the center of the map, which is kind of questionable as you get it being shot from the side. You make a great escape maneuver. This is one of the reasons I like this map overall, not only because it's dark and you can easily see enemy players on it, but because it, it provides escape maneuvers like that in the center of the map. It's not a, a terrible map um, for free-for-all like Simplex, where you're literally getting destroyed or trading for every kill, it feels like. You can get away if you know the map well enough. And you can see those players confused on your radar. Um, and it is puzzling to me because you know these guys are below you. These guys are obviously below you on your radar. Those little red arrows below the dot on your radar signify that they are below you a level. Um, they're down here, but for whatever reason you think they're in front of you. And so you throw a grenade, and that's the perfect grenade to hit some, or almost the perfect grenade to hit someone behind this rock. But no one's up here, so it's kind of puzzling overall. Now this guy lifts up, does a very good job of doing so, but unfortunately you don't end up getting this kill because you drop. I would not have dropped there. Um, there's no reason to drop to this floor. Basically the number one avoidable area um, you do not want to be on this map is in this bottom floor area, right here, and here, in this area. This is, the, this is basically the worst place you can be besides absolutely bottom middle. And notice how the rail gun is placed in the absolute dead center of this area. There is a very, very strong reason for this. Notice how also there is a lift that takes you immediately up to the top of the map right next to the railgun. There's also a reason for this. It's called good map design. Um, I can't state it enough. This map is definitely, someone was definitely thinking when they made this map, unlike uh, Simplex. shot from this player here. I um, don't mean to slam the map simplex. I know people spent a long time forging that map, but the map simplex has gone through enough revisions where I think it just needs to be called out because um, its current revisions still are not what it needs to be. Um, so moving on here, you do end up playing several, up several more people. Um, notice how um, Box is focusing on players who are already weak and trying to clean them up. That is definitely what you want to be doing in free-for-all. And good shots right here. This is basically my BR strength right here. That's that's very, very good. And you have great multitasking minded as you're able to clean up that seven guy for the double kill. But I wanted to point out an error you made here. Um, you you do very, very well up until you get the the uh, double kill, but do you almost die behind a wall here? You end up reloading here. Okay, and this is puzzling to me because you don't need to reload and you do this a second time or later on in the film, but you needed to have sprinted here. You need to sprint up here. And this guy's going to probably chase you and jump up on top of this, maybe. Then throw a grenade right at this little wall right here. So it bounces into his feet as, the, as this guy comes around the corner and tries to kill you. Okay. Now, you may not survive this, but if you had sprinted around the corner, your shields would have popped. This guy would have seen it and he would have come after you. That's what you want to be saving your grenades for, is when people are chasing you. Your grenades are not going to get you kills, necessarily. They're going to weaken players for you to headshot them. That's what you want to be using them for. You want to be prenating areas of your radar that you know people are going to be in in half a second and prenate that area so that they're already weak as you come around the corner. Unfortunately, you don't end up sprinting and you don't make it around the corner quite in time. Top three is you do push up high, which is good, um, but you don't seem to understand that this player where this player is going. I don't think you've played this map very much, and that's that's okay. A lot of people haven't, but this guy is below you right now, and on your radar, right here, you can see that he's on your same level, and you're jumping very high in the air, so where can he possibly be? How could he have possibly gone from there to high very fast? Obviously, he's using the lift, okay? And this lift shoots you up very fast because of these red barriers. They pump you up very fast, and you hit the floor very quickly. It's not like on Ragnarok or Haven, where you're in the lift in the air for a long period of time and it can be easily destroyed. You definitely can use the lifts on this map very effectively. But what's even more puzzling to me about the situation is how um, you go towards the center of the map and the overshield literally spawns next to you or in front of you. And I think you're so tunnel vision focused on your radar that you just completely miss the overshield. The overshield is arguably even more important than the railguns on this map, simply because you can survive a railgun shot with an overshield, a full railgun shot to the face with an overshield. The, rail, the overshield is super important. It's basically two free kills in a row 
and no one is really contesting you for this. I mean, you're re- literally right next to it, but you don't end up going for that. And this is the this is what defines the difference between a 46 CSR player and a 50 CSR player. I mean, you even have strong shots on these players, which, I mean, I would have liked to see you grab the overshield and then done really well. Um, again, the grenade is kind of strange. You do end up getting that kill um, and very good shots, but you would have had most, if not all, of your overshield still by now. You wouldn't be hiding around this corner waiting. What I would have done, I would have run around here and then just lifted straight up. It's, it's faster to just run around here and lift straight up than it is to run around all the way around here and get possibly naded by someone. Pushing up here, you see some guys engaging, so you're going to go after them. Probably a good idea, but unfortunately, um, this guy has the overshield. And I want to point out something right here uh, in your gameplay. Okay, I want you to watch the overshield indicator in the top left-hand corner of the screen right now. Watch this. It disappears. Who's on your radar right now? This guy. Okay, He just grabbed the overshield. Okay, This guy has the overshield. So you know, by keeping track of this guy on your radar, this guy or, or someone in the area you are approaching is going to have the overshield. And as the dots dwindle on your radar, as you approach this person, you can obviously tell he's killing people because he has the overshield and is not dying. Um, you can see that this dot disappears here. And so it's very crucial that um, you do not go after and give this player the kills, okay? You need to frustrate the overshield guy, and you almost do get him, actually. Again, very solid shot on this player, but um, you don't need to give him that kill. Again, completely ignoring the railgun. I'm not sure why this happens. Um, you do um, end up backing up. What I would have done is I would have come up here and gone up this ramp and gone into a higher position. As it is, um, you, you're you in the worst position on the map, the lowest position. In most free-for-all games, you want to be as high as you possibly can on the map. You end up being double teamed by two people um, as you charge out again. Basically, staying or frequenting an area is a bad idea in, in Rumble Pit overall, unless you really, really know what you're doing um, and have a very, very solid position. An example of that would be uh, on Abandon Ring 3. Staying top Ring 3 with the saw would be, I mean, yeah, you could hold that position. You could definitely do that. Or staying top middle of an overshield. You could definitely do that. But on this map, you got to keep moving. A great example of a grenade um, right there. Um, your second grenade is definitely lackluster, though. Um, you need to have pause just for a second. Um, don't reload, because there's absolutely no need to. And you need to hur- hurl the grenade right at this corner. Literally not at this wall right here, because then it would bounce way over here. You need to hurl it right at this corner. So it'll bounce right here and onto the floor and immediately explode. Okay, the, One of the fastest exploding grenades you can throw right there is if you hit the wall and then it hits the ground, and boom, it's going to explode very soon after in his face. Now, you may not have been able to get this kill because of this guy uh, kind of kind of coming, up, coming behind you there. Um, but you may have been able to do it, and there was no need to reload there. Um, you cannot afford to reload when you have that low shield. And the game is early, so feel free to put as many shots as you want into enemy players. That No one has a huge lead right now. If it was in the late game, I would say avoid shooting people if you're about to die. and Because it would make other players easier to... Uh, um, get the kill on the person you were shooting, because you're obviously not going to get that player. But um, it's very early in the game, so shoot as many people as you want before you die, for sure. Now, it is puzzling to me because you give up your high ground position here. Um, overall, if you're going to do that, you need to push up high like you do here right now, or push up here. Um, I actually would have gone around and gotten to this position. These are the strongest positions on the map, right here um, and right here. It just feels like that is the strongest area you can be in. Because there's so many escape routes, routes you can get away from. Again, you end up going across the map, and it works out for you, okay? There's several things that work out for you here um, that normally would not work out for um, someone who's facing really, really good people. Like, if it, that all the players in the game were really good, then that might not work out for them. Um, but it ends up working out for you here specifically. You end up wandering around the map and taking out players who are already weak, and you do overall a very good, strong job. You have a very strong BR um, overall, and it's it's nice to see that. Um, you do have one or two plays later on that are questionable with the battle rifle, but overall, like here, your shots are very, very strong, and I like to see that. Um, that guy is kind of an idiot for not going for you. He would spawn behind you and could have easily cleaned you up. I would have gone for the, go for the overshoot right now, um, but unfortunately, a guy spawns right behind you, and I want to point this out. 
This is one of the reasons why people dislike Halo 4 in general. Okay, and I don't mean to harp on this for very long, but this guy spawned directly behind him. Okay, literally directly behind him. I mean, he just exited this area. That's not even fair. The game should, like, nullify this spawn point for at least 5 to 10 seconds after he's left the area. It hasn't been even, like, 2 or 3 seconds yet. It's it's kind of horrific. If you've played um, any free-for-all on Haven, or specifically um, King of the Hill on Haven, you know exactly what I'm talking about. People will spawn behind you on the ramps just like this, and it's supremely aggravating. One of the few flaws with this map. Again, a really good grenade, but it doesn't end up coming through partition because you're already um, really low. Um, now, right here, fastest way to get the overshield is by jumping. Um, again, I don't think you've played this map very much because you try to jump onto this ramp, but you miss and sort of hit the wall. Then you decide, oh, um, I'm going to run bottom mid and try to take out this guy, which is really leery because the person grabbing the overshield could immediately see you. And what I don't understand it here is why you don't lift. Um, the reason why you could lift is maybe you could um, engage this player and he would not expect it. I, again, I'd like to point out how the lift is very closed and covered and it shoots you up very fast and you're on the ground very fast and you can have traction on the ground and move very quickly. It's not like Haven or Ragnarok like a previous day in the film. Um, overshield guy cleans him up and you know this guy's overshield because he was the guy above you. He ends up getting away and this is really lucky. Um, this guy just literally walked past you um, focusing on those guys. And you melee him from behind. Good job there. These guys are um, above you here. You end up getting another good kill. Um, taking out that guy. Now, I like how you crouch here. This is a really good play overall. You're crouching, um, you're waiting for your shields to regenerate mildly, and you end up charging out at a correct time, even though maybe a little too early, you do get the other kill. This is just good plays overall. You're making very solid plays here, shooting guys who are already weak, going after them, and you get the killing spree. Very good job here, and you're in the lead by one kill. This is unfortunate, though, as I stated previously in the film, you do choke with your BR here, and unfortunately, directly afterwards, you get absolutely destroyed, because you, mainly because you don't strafe. And I don't think you even saw this player. This player gives you significant trouble. He ends up outclassing you in the final game stats um, and in your, in your position on the scoreboard. Um, but to be honest, you were a little jerky in your shots here, and you weren't strafing in them. Um, there, there really wasn't much you could have done about that. Now, once again, the railgun does spawn, and I'm not sure why you don't go after it. And I want to be frankly honest, um, there are two ways you can approach uh, what you did here without giving up your position by jumping to the bottom of the map. You can sprint jump over here to this. Okay, See this little shelf right here? A lot of people don't know it. Again, a very dark map. You can't see it, but you just jump onto this little shelf, then crouch jump onto this, and then jump over to this area. That's a really good play. Um, I believe you also can sprint jump over to this. Okay, this little ledge right here, then jump on top. Okay, Players don't expect that. I haven't seen many, play many players using that. That would have definitely been a better than doing what you did right here. You did get the kill, which is good, but you gave up your position, and so you were cleaned up by that guy. Now, again, you don't go for the railgun. I'm not sure why that is. You throw a grenade, but this guy's already below you. Um, I probably would have thrown that grenade, too. Um, but the grenade right here that you don't throw is puzzling to me. You probably could have thrown the grenade definitely right here to get this guy. But, again, very solid VR shots on Devil here. Um, you jump at the perfect opportunity right as your shields go dead. The problem is your secondary kill right here. Or, your should I say, the lack of your secondary kill right here. You don't throw a grenade. All right, You l perfectly out VR Devil. You jump right as your shields are about to go dead, making it very difficult for him to get the headshot, and you nail your shots almost perfectly, okay? You end up expending five shots here. You only needed to expend four, and you killed him with four, but you expended the fifth shot. This is very normal. It happens to me all the time. The BR is a four-shot kill. Normally, you can kill three fully shielded Spartans with one clip of the battle rifle. So, therefore, there is no reason to reload right here. There is no reason to reload like you're doing right here. You have... Um, seven shots left, I would believe. Yeah, that's correct. And, or seven trigger pulls left. And you could have easily taken out this player if you would have just moved a little bit to the right and thrown a grenade right here at this corner. Bounced it right here if he's about to drop and um, into his face, and you probably would have been able to kill him. Now, I say probably because his railgun doesn't even hit you. This person who fires a railgun doesn't even hit you with a railgun. 
it just grazes you and takes out the remainder of your health. It actually explodes behind you. You can see how you can sort of hear it explode behind you there. Kind of interesting how the railgun does some damage as it crosses you, kind of like the Spartan laser does. Uh, but you do have to hit them dead on with it. Now, Devil does grab the overshield, so I'd be definitely keeping track of this player. Um, and unfortunately, you don't. He ends up coming around, um, and a, you can see he's uh, prenating you, and then he easily cleans you up there. Um, not much you could have done here. That was a really good play on Devil's part, getting just outside your radar range. Um, an okay grenade, but I wouldn't have even bothered, and here's the reason why. Because you throw this grenade, that doesn't do anything. Because you throw this grenade, you die. And why do I say that? Because you pause slightly to throw the grenade. You're like, pause, grenade throw. Grenade explosion, then move forward. Okay. If you had saved your time and not done that, this player, Devil, would not have prenated you like he just does. But unfortunately, I think you're going to die regardless because he has the overshield. Um, now, I would like to point out also that he prenades you perfectly around the corner, like I was trying to tell you. He, he actually uses a grenade off this little ramp here, I believe, and perfectly prenades you. Boom, you have fallen with no shield, and you die. Um, and that just goes to show how you could, and he has no shields there, so you may have been able to take him out. You get the assist there, but then you end up cleaning up um, this kill, which is good for the comeback kill, but unfortunately Devil takes you out yet again, getting the higher advantage point on you. Um, I, I would have definitely pursued that kill that you just got for the comeback kill, and I probably would have died there just like you did. Um, you don't pick up the railgun again. I'm just really not sure about this, especially at this point in the game. You've got to pick up the railgun, dude. You could pick up the railgun and just railgun this guy coming up after you very, very easily. If you're not confident in the weapon, you need to play Custom Games Octagon with it um, to 100 or 200 kills in a row against another player. Um, I'm serious. Play to 100, 200 kills. Just flat out. Take the time. Do it. You'll be a way better Halo player because of it. And spe specifically better with the railgun. It's not your long-range rail going to matter, it's your close to mid-range that really matters. So moving up here, you do get shot from behind, which has no makes you no shield. Regardless of whether you're shot from behind or not, you need to be banking grenades. You have two grenades here, you knew this guy was going to come around the corner right here. You should have been banking your grenades off the wall here. And if this guy hadn't have charged at this corner, this guy who's behind you would have been coming up after you. So you could have banked grenades behind you and gotten him. Um, as it is, you don't really use your grenades, and you try to just shoot him, which I'm not sure. Like, when you're a low shield like that, you have to use your grenades. You're going to have to. Um, don't use a grenade. It's the last-ditch effort when you're about to die, but you could have gotten the kills if you were shooting. This guy coming around the corner, though, that you just died from had full shields, and you probably knew that to some degree. Now, here's another example why you need to be picking up the railgun. Another reason why you want to be picking up the railgun is so simply other players don't have it, because... You literally give away second or possibly even first place because of this death you're about to experience right here. There's two kills remaining in the game. You are three kills away from the final score that you need to win the game. Okay, And this death that you have right here from the railgun guy, um, well, not actually right here, but um, a little bit later on in the film, literally makes you um, get second place in the film. You can see um, that this guy had the railgun, killed that player, and then he kills you with the railgun straight away right here. And now I want you to notice how this player uses the railgun. This is definitely a tip and trick you can use, okay? You charge the railgun before the person you can see is even in your sights. You charge the railgun, then jump around the corner and shoot them, okay? Specifically jumping. Gives you a little, you know, a little loftiness to your jump and slows your movement down just enough for you to perfectly aim that into their body there. Um, that's how you want to be using the railgun, just like the Spartan laser. You want to charge it while you're behind cover, then peek out right as it's about to discharge and shoot them. Um, that's the easier way. You don't want to be charging while you're trying to aim at them. You don't want to charge and aim and jump around the corner and shoot them, kind of like prenating, basically. Um, now, as it is, you do end up respawning, and this guy perfectly does that. You can see he's charged Five it before you're even around the corner, and boom, um, he nails you with that. And that's death literally causes you to get second place in this film. Um, because you weren't able to get any kills there. Now, I would like to also back up and say something here. Um, you need to be watching uh, the score more, okay? This orange guy is the only orange... Look at the bottom right corner of the screen. This orange guy is the only orange guy in the game. This is one of the main reasons why you don't want to be a color that is not gray, okay? Because it's very easy to discern 
you as a player on the scoreboard in the bottom right. The scoreboard shows your, on the bottom right, the score always shows your position and the highest player's position or the player who is right um, contesting you for the lead if you are in the lead. Okay, So what this means is that you're always going to see the player who's in the highest position regardless of where. You could have two kills right now and you'd still see the orange player as the highest player. You need to be avoiding that player if you know he's about to kill you and specifically going after that player to kill him. Now, I'm not saying that you're, you're running around the map trying to find the orange guy and not shooting anyone else. No, no, no. When you see the orange guy, shoot the crud out of him. Prioritize him as a target more than other players. I didn't see too many times where you could have done that in this film, but that's just another little tip that I'm giving you, just another little thing that I can give you to get better at the game. If you combine all of these tips and tricks into this gameplay and have performed them a little bit more correctly, I guarantee you, you would have won this game. Just straight out would have won this game. Um, thank you for submitting this gameplay um, box. Um, and for those of you who want to submit a gameplay to me for me to review, um, go to the annotation in the top left hand corner that's there right now, or there's a link in the description that will take you to the video that will describe how you submit your gameplay clips to me. That will describe everything you need to know. Um, iBox has a YouTube channel, and um, I'd like to shout that out as well. One of the interesting videos I watched on his channel was a minute-long outtake from one of his live streams where his son comes in, and um, it's, or son or daughter comes in and talking about how what he or she wants for dinner, and it's funny. Um, I'll link that as well in the annotation in the top right-hand corner of the screen and in the description of this video as well. You can find iBox's channel and that video. I'd specifically recommend starting with that video. He only has 29 subscribers, so um, let me know if his channel is worth watching. Um, that's the only video I watched, but let, it, let me know. Um, if you guys enjoy this video, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace, guys.